2002 inductee Florence Griswold was born on Christmas Day in 1850 into a prominent seafaring family in Old Lyme. Though her life took many unexpected turns and was often fraught with financial hardships, this remarkable woman became a pivotal figure in the lives of leading American artists. After her death in 1937, the New York Times wrote, in her delicate and high-bred way, Miss Florence had her part in fostering authentic American art. The memory of this gracious spirit survives as a part of no inconsiderable chapter in the history of our native art. Florence was the youngest child of Captain Robert and Helen Powers Griswold. She was born in this house in 1850, lived her entire life here, and hers was a prominent family. Her grandfather was a governor of Connecticut, and her great-grandfather was a governor of Connecticut. Uh, but it was her father that had an illustrious career on the high seas between New York and London as the commander of a packet boat. In fact, he was away at sea when she was born in 1850. My dear son, I have the pleasure to inform you that Christmas morning about three o'clock, Helen was confined with a fine, plump daughter. The child is very quiet, has very black hair and eyes, and fine features. Helen rejoiced that it is a daughter. The children say Santa Claus brought their ma a fine present. They almost devour the little thing. Florence was five years old when her father retired from the high seas. It was a happy time for the family. She and her sisters and brother all went to the public school in town, District 1 school, uh, and they had many friends and enjoyed life in the village. Uh, their house was right on the main street, and this was a time when their father was investing in local businesses. It was a prosperous time for the family. All of that, however, was interrupted by the death of uh, the son of young Robert Griswold, who died at the age of 17, uh, stricken by diphtheria. When Florence was 16 years old, she went off to New London to the Perkins School, a private school established by her aunts, uh, Lucretia and Carolyn Perkins. And it was there that she learned French, she learned China painting, uh, drawing, and music. By the 1870s, unfortunately, Captain Roberts' business dealings had fallen on hard times. Uh, he, in fact, was forced to mortgage this house uh, three consecutive years uh, in order to try to make ends meet. Um, clearly, this was a difficult time for the Griswold family. By all accounts, however, the family's financial situation didn't adversely affect the young Miss Florence Griswold. She was in her 20s with a wide circle of friends, an active social life, and even had a reputation as an equestrian, uh, as an 1877 newspaper account gives testament to. On a visit to Old Lyme, I was invited to watch a game called Paper Trail, or Hare and Hound, in which 20 ladies and 20 gentlemen on horseback were divided into leaders and hunters. Miss Florence Griswold is a graceful rider who might surprise our English cousins, should we ever put our national equestrian skill to the test. In 1878, in order to make ends meet, Florence Griswold, her two sisters, and their mother opened the Griswold Home School, a school for young women to come for their academic and artistic education. And this was a school that they would run here in this house for 14 years. Birth commenced school with Florence this morning, and she likes going. It's very pleasant. Florence has taken the north front room and fitted it up for a schoolroom. She has but five scholars. I think it is a desirable place in regard to health and comfort. And if Florence teaches the ordinary branches with French, Louise music, and Adele painting and drawing, the course seems quite complete. In 1882, Captain Robert Griswold dies, leaving the family in grave financial straits. Fortunately, however, friends of the family came to the rescue by paying off the mortgage on the house, and this enabled Florence, her sisters, Louise and Adele, and their mother to live in the house and continue to operate the homeschool. By the late 1890s, misfortune again strikes the Griswold family. Florence is to lose both her sister Louise and her mother Helen. Left in the house with her one remaining sister, Adele, she's forced to actually commit her sister to the Hartford Retreat, a sanitarium where she's to live her remaining years. So by 1900, Florence Griswold is alone in the house with little means to provide for herself. Despite these obstacles, 
Miss Florence persevered with unquenchable optimism. We know this from reading newspaper accounts that show she took out ads to sell pansies and roses from her garden. In another instance, she organized an amusement club here in the house, an amateur theatrical for the enjoyment of anyone who wanted to take part. In the late 1890s, the Griswold Home School was winding down, and Miss Florence opened her house to summer boarders. And in 1899, the renowned landscape painter, Henry Ward Ranger, arrived in Old Lyme and boarded at Miss Florence's. And he was immediately taken with the possibility that Old Lyme could be a place for an artist colony. Well, soon other artists followed Ranger's lead, and Old Lyme and the Grizzled House attracted a new generation of America's leading painters, artists like Child Hassam, Willard Metcalf, Will Howe Foote, William Chadwick. These artists were in the vanguard of the Impressionist movement and together formed the Lyme Art Colony that became America's center for Impressionism. Lawrence Grizzled absolutely thrived in her new position as she described herself the keeper of the artist colony. Here in the dining room, the artists would gather in the evening for conversations with Florence Griswold. And this was a place that, as one artist put it, had all the charm of being a guest, but the freedom of being at home. And indeed, I think perhaps the, the most obvious example of that are these painted wall and door panels that you see in this room and then throughout the first floor. It's a tradition that began when these artists went to Europe where they explored many of the European inns in France and Holland where there was a tradition of painting on walls and doors. They essentially translated that experience and brought it to New England, to Old Lyme. And how lucky we are that they did because what they've done, as you can see here, is an extraordinary ensemble of the American Impressionists. And what it gives us is really a rather complete chronicle of the Lyme Art Colony. Florence Grizzled charged $7 a week for room and board, and as many as 15 artists could stay here at any given time. This was a business relationship that she had with the artists that extended even to her acting as their agent, helping to sell their paintings uh, from her front hallway or shipping works uh, to their exhibitions. But it went beyond to one of real friendship. This is seen in the way in which they involved her uh, in their lives, invited her to Florida, to New York, and perhaps one of the most important friendships she had was with Woodrow Wilson's family, particularly Ellen Axon Wilson, Mrs. Woodrow Wilson, who was an artist and who came and spent three summers here with her daughters. And in fact, uh, the Wilsons invited Florence Griswold to the White House to attend one of their daughter's weddings. Miss Florence was also very active in town affairs. She was a founding member of the Old Line Fire Department and participated in a uh, fight to prevent the trolley from invading this small pastoral town. She was very much a person who contributed to a new identity for this town as an art center, and she described it in the following way. At first, the artist adopted Lyme, then Lyme adopted the artist, and now today, Lyme and art are synonymous. Florence Griswold was the central figure in that transformation. And when the artists were looking for a place to exhibit, to show their work to the community and beyond, she gave them the land right next door to her house, upon which they built a beautiful gallery, which opened in 1921, the first such art gallery built by a summer art colony. And who should be the manager of that gallery but Florence Griswold herself? In 1936, at the age of 85, Florence Griswold was in ill health, and she was still in debt. The court appointed a conservator to handle her affairs, and that conservator judged that the only way she could get out from under was by selling her house. This was an absolutely shocking development to her many friends, to the artists of the colony, and indeed to the Griswold family. Together they rallied to the cause so that she could live out her years in the house. In December 1937, just three weeks shy of her 87th birthday, Florence Griswold died this remarkable woman who was so kind and generous in spirit helped to establish an artist colony that changed the identity of this small coastal village, shaped the careers of leading American artists, and wrote a compelling and vital chapter in the history of American art. In 1947, the Florence Grizzled Association opened a museum in her memory.